with James Max on Talk Radio. 5.50 is the time. Very good morning. Early breakfast underway with me, James Max, this Monday morning with you till 6.30. After 6, we go through the papers. But now we turn our attention to a couple of big uh, political stories, uh, which you might like to hear a little bit more about, including this one. One who dares wins. SAS needs more posh officers amid an influx of working class recruits because public schools instill the leadership skills required, soldiers say. Does class matter anymore? Let's find out. Connor Tomlinson is a political commentator with Young Voices UK. Joins me now. Connor, good morning. Thanks, how are you? Very good morning to you. So uh, what do you make of this story? Uh, it, it seems a little bit peculiar, but... Um, Apparently, uh, the army, uh, particularly the SAS, it needs more people uh, who went to public school. Um, it's, is this a classist comment? Is this the sort of thing that we should be, uh, I don't know, instilling into our nation? Or should we just be saying, these are the skills you need to have. Uh, this is who we're going to recruit and this is who we're going to uh, try and uh, try and get. I do think the skills obviously transcend class because leadership it moves across not just uh, the battlefield, but also into things like the boardroom. Uh, if anyone here has heard of uh, ex-Navy SEAL Joko Willink, he w left the, the military after serving tours of Iraq and then went around a bunch of America's corporate headquarters and gave the same skills that he would tell his his uh, troops to then empower the, the people that worked in the boardrooms to give the same leadership abilities. So I would say it, it filters down not only through the military, but also the same entrepreneurial spirit that empowers the same sort of people like Alan Sugar as they do a, a grocer on the Roman road. And that sort of thing has always been around in Britain. I mean, uh, Napoleon rather infamously underestimated us as a nation of shopkeepers. And well, he didn't exactly win Waterloo, did he? And then to have it on the other side, the idea that the ivory tower leech should be controlling everything. Um, we had that throughout the first world war but pretty, do you think pretty disastrous though. but do you think though that we ended up with um a sort of culture that champions if you like certain kinds of backgrounds as opposed to saying we live in a meritocracy you need to be able to have certain skills to be able to do certain jobs whether it be in broadcast or government or leadership or and then recruit for those skills now if our state school system is failing in a number of areas that so say for example uh, we need um, better leadership skills then try and make sure that the school system offers that to anybody wherever you may come from as opposed to saying this is uh, this is the type of person we need and to make it a classist discussion I definitely agree that it's a failing on the school's part. I mean, Tony Sewell's report showed that the white working class boys in particular are falling behind in Britain. And I think the fact that the schools themselves were set up um, in the 19th century to inculcate obedience that would make you a, a great factory worker rather than more of a free thinker shows that there's uh, it's definitely falling down, especially when they're saying that a lot of the military nowadays can't actually motivate themselves to, to have that ability to, to speak to the troops and, and there's actually a disobedience issue. But I would say that particularly... A uh, class background can actually have a, a great uh, way forward, I, I know, for example, for my own family, um, in making it so that ego doesn't come before humility. You can't exactly have a, a very fragile snowflake mentality when you're you know, slinging concrete on a building site or sitting around a, a large family gathering table when you're getting everything ripped out of you and, uh, and insults charged back and forth. You've got to be quite fast on your feet. So I think, actually, the, the class background, even though we shouldn't, exalt it as, oh, uh, a victim mentality or that you should get special privileges because you're disadvantaged, etc. It does actually give you the sort of character building traits that you can carry forward into professional setting. I think actually saying about the meritocracy, though, there is a bit of a perception, especially with things like the BBC, where you've got the sort of guardian Easter class who worm their way in either through connections or, or partners, or they seem to fail upwards in government with cabinet reshuffles, etc. There is a perception that it's a lot harder to get your start on the ladder and, and social mobility has lost something, uh, especially in the post four years. So but then would, do you would... think that we should have a society where who you know doesn't uh, help you? Because there's no doubt that um, regardless of what you do, if you know certain people, if you have connections, if you have um, a strong network, that's going to help you in the in the work that you do. I don't think that's, a, that's necessarily a bad thing. I just think you need to as, as an in, on an individual level, you need to probably merit over, over nepotism. Um, but that's one of the good things that actually came out of universities, for example, and the entire idea that you, you know, if you if you work hard enough at school and then 
no matter your class background, you can get your start in life right. by going to a British university and networking with like-minded people who might actually have a bit more money to front the same sort of projects that your skills would lend you to, but you wouldn't be able to start on your own. Same thing sort of happened to okay. me. It's, you know, I'm talking to you now. There, there we go. Uh, now, let's talk about uh, the M25. Blocking the M25 as part of an uh, Insulate Britain protest. Apparently, it's legitimate and, and reasonable, according to the Green MP, Caroline Lucas. Uh, do you think that protests like this uh, are reasonable? Well, speaking of people who think they know what's best for working Brits, um, no, I don't, I don't think this sort of foot soldiering for some sort of eco-socialism is, is particularly sensible. I personally, I, I've gotten started on all of this in the environmental sector, yelling at the government and spending too much of my money, and I haven't needed to cause four car collisions or glue myself to the road to make my point, um, and it's been rather effective thus far. I would be shocked that, as well, the, it's reasonable to say, oh, this, all these policies are so-called job creation, it's going to create wealth. It's one big cycle of you know people digging ditches and then paying people to fill them. Or the old joke about the council that you need 15 people to stand around with clipboards to watch one guy uh, uh, retime out the roads. That would be the, the scheme proposed by these kind of protesters that say, oh, you need to, in AOC Green New Deal fashion, tear down every building in Britain and rebuild it with, with fortified insulation, um, the most fatherly advice possible but also the kind of same kind of advice that says hey well we, we're going to sit in a road and tell someone else how to spend all of your money um I, if i was going to do home improvement I'd, I'd rather spend it myself thank you and i'd also rather that working people could get to work and not have to deal with the likes of you there we go uh, said it as it is connor thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning here on talk radio that's connor tomlinson political commentator with young voices uk